Hey folks, welcome to chapter five of NASM's seventh edition certified personal trainer textbook and uh, chapter five begins section three. So this is basic and applied sciences and nutritional concepts. So uh, chapter five is going to be the nervous muscular skeletal system. Now that's six chapters in this one section. It also corresponds to the first domain of, of information. So NASM has six domains. Domain one is actually what is section three in a textbook. Uh, don't worry about it. It's it's not relevant other than the fact that they have put this first when it comes to the um, domain information from a testing perspective. And that's all it is. Uh, at the end of the day, you still need to know a certain amount of information, and uh, there you go. So section three, chapter five, so the nervous muscular skeletal systems, it's not the highest priority chapter. Now there's really good, interesting information, and I know chapter five is not a long chapter, but there's a, a lot of really important concepts that perhaps you, you may you may not be tested on necessarily, but if they're going to pull information from this particular domain, five through 10, um, you'll probably see yeah, a fair amount from chapter five. So as with each of the chapters, first thing I'm going to recommend you do is go to the end of the chapter, which is all the way back here to page uh, 148. Well, technically 149. Read the summary, of course. It's, a, it's one paragraph, very short. Chapter review, same thing, very, very short. Do not take notes on that. That's just kind of warm your brain up. It's a great way to do it. Um, you can thank NASM for kind of doing this for you. But then, of course, now we're going to pick up our pen, get your pad. And this is where your first round recommended round of reading and rewriting. Of course, it's going to be the chapter highlights. If you've gone through the um, previous four chapters, you know, you know the drill, which is to uh, get into the chapter highlights and each bullet point. You're simply going to read the bullet point. And, you know, in a perfect world, you just rewrite the entire bullet point, but that doesn't help you to memorize because they're too long. They're a sentence and the goal is to crush it down or to do what's known as the irreducible minimum number of words. Um, that's going to help you to memorize the main concept of the bullet point without having to memorize the whole bullet point. So go ahead and do that with your chapter highlights. It's going to take you all the way on to the next page. Once you've done that, now go back to the beginning of the chapter. And again, this is um, this this is going to give you some really uh, important information from from a purely anatomical physiological perspective. Um, and the idea is that if you can sort of get a good idea of the nervous muscular skeletal systems early on, it will help you to understand later later information in the chapters because for the most part, it doesn't really matter if you know uh, terms and names, what's critically important for the personal trainer, particularly what NASM is going to show you later on in the, in the textbook as you move through it, is that it's knowing terms, understanding terms, uh, anatomical terms, of course, so that you can move into sort of the real world application part of this. And so you're going to go through chapter five. I'm going to run through, through it with you. Remember, there's four main things you should be looking for. One is the chapter highlights, so that's one. And then in no particular order after that, uh, look at your sidebar um, terms. Make sure you know those. Use the same thing. Look at the term. They're in blue, by the way, in the text, but don't read the text. And I'm trying to uh, make sure you understand that from an efficiency, time efficiency perspective, it's not necessary to read the book. They've given you all the information you need in the sidebar right? Chapter highlights, the internal bullet points, right? So anytime you see bullet points internally inside the chapter, stop, read it, slow down and see whether or not um, it's um, it's truly important. And I'll let you know if, um, if it's going to be, you know, represented on the test, maybe. Um, and then of course, there's tables, charts, you could include in this, in this uh, chapter figures, which are just drawings, and those can be very helpful. And, and I do know uh, a lot of students, when they get to chapter five, this is where they'll go out and they'll buy an app for anatomy and fizz and uh, all the bones and all the muscles. You don't need to do that. First of all, all the muscles you need to know and their functions are found in Appendix C. So you don't need an app. I know there's there's this thing called uh, Muscle and some of these other apps, which are really good apps. But 
they're not necessary. They're, they're really not. But if you want to use them, absolutely use them. I'm just saying from a time element perspective, the amount of time you have to study, of course, use them if that's going to be helpful. But for the most part, everything you need is literally in this textbook. So beginning of the textbook, there is a helpful hint chart here because the human movement system or the HMS kinetic chain, this concept is critically important throughout the rest of the textbook. I'm just telling you, when it comes to assessments, um, postural distortions, uh, they're going to speak consistently, consistently to the kinetic chain, um, kinetic chains, and that's uh, the five kinetic chain components. And so you definitely want to at least look, maybe redraw that picture. They're going to start with the nervous system, but remember, go through, memorize your side panels. Again, that helpful hint over here. There are figures on the neuron, the CNS or the central nervous system. You got lots of terms that you need to just, just go and write and rewrite them. Remember, Quizlet is also a very helpful study tool. Remember, along with the uh, materials that you're going through right now, Body Design University, we have specific study sets on our Quizlet, right? Private Quizlet account that gives you all of this and allows you to use the gamification component of Quizlet to help you uh, study and memorize it. The helpful hint box here is good, right? So read that and rewrite that information. Remember those helpful hint boxes and some of the other little boxes that they have spread out. So helpful hint, helpful hint. They've got critical boxes, apply, apply your, or what you know, or knowledge boxes. They're all good to read because it's not a ton of information. It's not going to bog you down. And so as you go through these pages, again, it's not necessary to read through the material for the most part, they are just giving you the definitions in the text, the body. And uh, you can get that just by looking at those side panels. Uh, same thing here as you move through page 120. Here's the stretch. I was, that's what I was trying to remember, stretch your knowledge box. So um, not a bad idea to kind of look at this. It's a little bit more information than you need. You know, don't let terms like afferent and efferent nerves um, bog you down or confuse you, okay? Just write the word down. You write the word down in its definition. You do that a couple of times, you'll memorize it and it will trigger the memory when you see that term. You may not know it perfectly or exactly, but that's not rel as relevant when you get to the testing. So there is a try, this box on page 121, sure. Like I say, most of these ancillary boxes are, are interesting information. Not necessarily sure you're gonna see any questions on the exam in these particular boxes, but it couldn't hurt to at least read through them. Again, it's not gonna bog you down. There's not so much information. Uh, again, know the side panel boxes as we move over to 122, 123, you'll notice there's nothing here that requires um, excessive explanation. Your job is to memorize integrative function. What is it, right? They're, they've got the definition in the copy, but it's right there. It's literally the... In one sense, it's almost half that paragraph is on the side panel. So try to look at this and crush it down, irreducible minimum, to get as few words as possible that will help you remember the term, but still um, capture the, the meaning or the definition. Okay, muscle spindles, the stretch reflex. Um, you definitely need to know that muscle spindles, tell the muscle to contract. Golgi tendon organs, the whole concept here with, with these uh, mechanoreceptors um, is that you're going to see them a lot in the stretching uh, chapters. Remember, when you get to those later chapters, it's not a bad idea. If you don't remember them, come on back here to chapter, chapter five. If you already know it from going through and memorizing this information from chapter five, you're going to be so much uh, more ahead of the game when you go to these later chapters. So it's the same thing when you move into the skeletal system. So again, the idea is that as you get to um, the skeletal system, page 125, again, look what's going on um, right here in this, in this top area of page 125. You got um, the three stages, motor skill development. So stage one, cognitive, associative, and autonomous. Um, you should know that. Training tip, same thing. You'll notice that during stage one, you may need to use simple. So the training tip part here um, is actually these training tip boxes, those are probably at higher priority to actually look at and read because they're actually helpful. 
So yes, 125, I would look at that training tip box and absolutely just rewrite that. During stage one, you may need to use simple instructions and break down the skill into small steps. I'm not going to rewrite that whole thing. I'm going to write stage one, cognitive, simple instructions equals simple instructions. I'm doing the same thing I'm I'm doing with the with the chapter highlights in the back. Okay, same exact thing. So by the way, the um, skeletal system, please don't try to memorize all of this. I know students that they look at that and like, oh my God, I got to memorize those bones. Uh, no, no, don't memorize the bones. It's like, you need to memorize 10 bones maybe, and you already know what they are. What's the bone in my leg, my upper leg, the femur. What are the two bones in the lower leg, right? Tibia, fibula. You know those, you know those bones. And if you don't just write those down, you do not need to know the extensive um, network of bones and all the names of them. Uh, that is simply not necessary from a testing perspective. Great training, uh, training tip box here on page 127. Types of bones. Yes, I would say that the characteristic part, the column, the example column, you probably can look at it, but I wouldn't sit there and try and memorize it. Um, only because once you do this uh, once, once you rewrite table five, one, once or twice, you'll already know the example, an example of it by the different bones they give you. But it's a, it's a, it's an important, somewhat important table to memorize. You just never know. They'll ask you a question on Wolf's Law for sure. They'll probably ask you a question on osteoblast. So osteoblast, B, osteo, B, blast, or osteo, C class. I always remember that by saying osteoblasts B build, osteo build. Osteoblasts are those um, bone cells responsible for hypertrophy of the of bones. Osteoclasts break down and remove old bone tissue. It's just a little memorization tip. Uh, getting technical. E yes, nothing wrong with reading it. I just wouldn't spend a whole lot of time trying to memorize it. If you can't memorize it and get it within a couple of minutes, you can rewrite the bullet points. It's the only reason is because it's in bullet points. And I'm always thinking, as soon as I see a bullet point, eh, better to look at it, read it, try to memorize it than not. So that's why I would say go with that. Stretch your knowledge box is a really good, this is a good box to look at. The stretch your knowledge box on page 129. Sure, read through it. Do not memorize the references. I hope you know that. Please don't memorize references. Short bones, flat bones. Again, that's all in the previous table. Remember? In the <clears throat> table, types of bones, table 5-1. You already have all that. It's already in there. Um, depressions, processes, know the terms, know the, know the definitions. <clears throat> Vertebral columns, sure. Now you get to table 5-2. Yes, you need to know table 5-2. But it's not hard. The cervical spine, C137. C7, T1 to T12, um, L1 to L5, the sacrum and the coccyx. So those are your vertebral column segments. It's important to know because of lordotic and kyphotic curves that you'll talk about later on in the textbook. Helpful hint. Um, yeah, sure. Easy breakfast at seven, lunch at noon, dinner at five. It's basically telling you the number of vertebrae, vertebra in each of those. Uh, breakfast at seven, meaning seven cervical, lunch, the middle part of the day, lunch at noon, 12 o'clock, um, and dinner at the end of the day or the lowest part of the body, meaning the lumbar spine, there's five lumbar, lumbar vertebrae and lower back. Okay, great. Move through. Again, you can see how quickly you can move through. Now I'm moving through quickly to show you what you should memorize. You have to stop and slow down so that you can look at the word and rewrite it. That's why you, you know, that's why you're, you're slowing down to do that and look at those terms and, and memorize the, um, memorize the definition. Again, you're just moving straight through nothing, nothing really difficult here other than looking at the term and memorizing them. When I say memorize, I'm saying uh, read it and rewrite it, say it out loud. That can be very helpful. You get to the muscular system and now you're saying, ooh, personal trainer's muscles. Yeah, sure, but you need to memorize the side panels. Don't do anything different. Um, don't all of a sudden start to read the text. You don't need to. 
Helpful hint, tendons versus ligaments. Yes. Again, it is a helpful, that's why they have it in there. Helpful hint. Now, and I will say this, that um, you may see a question related to, not exactly you know, verbatim from here, but related to the helpful hint boxes. So that's why I do recommend you go through and you actually read them. Another helpful hint box, page 143. Okay, here you are, the uh, sarcomere and the sliding filament theory. Yes, if you don't get this 100%, don't worry about it from a testing perspective. Just remember the definitions. You should be able to knock out those definitions without even thinking about it. Getting technical box, sure. Two protein structures, also important to muscle contractions. Um, tropomyosin and troponin. I doubt they're even going to ask you anything related to those two uh, proteins. So I would not spend a whole lot of time unless you got more time to study. Remember a lot of what, what we're talking about here, efficiency wise and the amount of time you're spending from an efficiency perspective comes down to how much time do you have before you're going to sit for the exam? So you got to take that into account. Uh, so yeah, great pictures. Sure. Figure 540, neuromuscular junctions, nothing difficult. Uh, conceptually, it's just a matter now of memorization, slide and filament theory. You can, um, you can get so caught up in this that you'll spend days and days and days and you're going to get frustrated. As soon as you start getting frustrated, turn the page and move on. You can always come back. Uh, the one thing you do not want to do in chapter five is get so caught up in trying to thinking you need to memorize all of this information because you don't. Um, helpful hint box. Yes, read it. Stretch your knowledge. Look what they're doing for you. They're giving you some insight into some important information. And that's why you should read through those. You need to know your five. Look what they did for table five, three. Table five, three is a condensed version of all of this information over here with muscle fiber types. And so what should you do? You need to memorize a type one muscle fibers, write down the characteristics. It's not difficult. It's not hard. You just got to write down those characteristics and do it over and over again so that it's very clear when you, when you hear, um, when you see a question or you hear something about type two muscle fibers, what are their characteristics? You know, right off the bat, what they're going to be. And they're listed right there. And that takes you to the end of chapter five. So we'll see you in chapter six.